Hey there, lovelies and gents. This is your girl, Nadia, a.k.a. The Prophet in Process, and I'm coming to you with this quick word of encouragement entitled, The Fool Ain't Dead Yet. This word is for those of you who are seriously frustrated, seriously rethinking this whole thing with your kingdom spouse. The Lord said, hold on. Just a little while longer. He gave me a few scriptures. Matthew 6, 33, Isaiah 41. Also, Lord help me remember the other one. I think it's 1 Samuel 25. Of course, the Bible is replete with a whole lot of examples of foolish people. This particular fool that I'm talking about is named Nabal or Nabal or something like that. But his name actually means fool. And, of course, I've recorded about him before, but I don't even know if you all have it yet because I got so much recorded. If it's not on here, this is the first time that you're hearing this. That's all fine and dandy. We're going to unpack quite a bit um, in the coming months anyway. However, um, this is 1 Samuel chapter 25 where there's a discussion about David, Nabal, or Nabal. I cannot pronounce his name. I don't know why I can't pronounce his name. It ain't but five letters, but we're going to keep it moving. And Abigail. Now, Abigail, she was a beautiful and wise woman, but she was married to a fool. And, of course, we all know David, God's beloved, the man after God's own heart. And for those of you who are unfamiliar with this story about David, Nabal, Nabal, whatever his name is, and Abigail, David was out in the wilderness. He and his his crew, they were protecting Nabal's shepherds. Or I can't can't even say, let me just call him the fool because that's just a whole lot easier. He was protecting the fool's shepherds. He's like, well, you know, ask the man of the house, basically. Can we, we trouble you for a morsel? Just a little food. You know, we've been protecting y'all. We haven't stolen anything from you all. Y'all didn't even ask us to do all of this. But we did it out of the kindness of our hearts. Now, all we ask is that you just give us a bite to eat. The ball. <sighs> yeah. He was like, well, who is David? I don't know who he is. Because in this story with Abigail and Nabal, you know what, maybe I need to read the scripture or something because I'm really struggling with this one right here. Lord have mercy. Okay. According to the passage, okay, a certain man in Mayon who had property there at Carmel was very wealthy. He had a lot of stuff. I'm just going to skip down through here. He was married to Abigail. She was intelligent and a beautiful woman. But her husband was surly and mean in his dealings. David was in the wilderness. He heard that Nabal was shearing sheep. So he sent ten young men and said to them, Go up to Nabal at Carmel and greet him in my name. Say to him, Long life to you, good health to you and your household, and good health to all that is yours. Now I hear that it is, gosh, I sound like a first grader. Now I hear that it is sheep shearing time. When your shepherds were with us, we did not mistreat them, and the whole time they were at Carmel, nothing of theirs was missing. Ask your own servants, and they will tell you. Therefore, be favorable towards my men. Since we have come at a festive time, please give your servants and your son David whatever you can find for them. He wasn't even picky. He wasn't even picky about this thing. That was a noble request, wouldn't you think? Hey, so David waited. However... Stupid is as stupid does. And the next response that Nabal gave was very stupid. David is a man after God's own heart, but he also knows how to use a weapon. And has killed many. Nabal answered, who is this David? Who is this son of Jesse? Obviously, he knew who he was because David didn't say he was the son of Jesse, did he? But anyway, many servants are breaking away from their masters these days. Why should I take my bread and water and the meat I have slaughtered for my shearers and give it to men coming from who knows where? David's men turned around and went back. When they arrived, they reported every word. David said to his men, strap up, strap your, strap up, let's get strapped. That sounds so light. Anyway, let me just read what it says. Each of you strap on your sword because that sounded, wow, interesting. So they did. Basically, David can kill all them, kill everybody in the household. Only nobody lied. However, one of the servants, thankfully, told Abigail, Abel's wife. Well, you know the whole story that I just read. Abigail got word. Okay, but she worked. God, I am struggling. She, <laughs> just like I can eat hooked on phonics. Okay. 
Abigail acted quickly. She took all of this food, wine, and all of this good stuff for these men to meet David because she knew what David was going to do. And she was like, don't tell my husband because he already stuck on stupid, so don't tell him. And, of course, she saved the day. Basically save the whole household by giving him word, look, the Lord has prevented you from taking vengeance into your own hands. Because not only would that have marred the reputation of David, had he done that out of anger, it would have also marred the reputation of God. So, let's be nice, ladies and gents. And in this case, of course, Nabal dies about 10 days later, after she finally decided to tell him what she did. I think she did that about two days later, something like this, about 12 days, something like that. He killed over. And, of course, then David found out, and he was like, oh, suck it, suck it now. Abigail is free. So, since she's free, let me go on and marry that woman. Anyway, that's kind of the gist of the story. I know I stretched it out. Um, yeah, it's one of them days, yeah. But regardless of the situation, the fool ain't dead yet. So hang in there. I mean, that's just it. The, the fool got to die. Y'all may already have that word that the Lord and told y'all that this is the one that you are supposed to be in a kingdom union with. Well, the Lord told me it's still under construction because the fool ain't dead yet. Well, since it's still under construction, what y'all dealing with right now? A stubborn, surly fool. I think I'm going to leave it there because I'm just flubbing up all over the place. I love you all, lovelies and gents. Loving yourselves accordingly. I forgot to say eat the meat and spit out the bones. Please do that. If it's not for you, please keep it pushing. If it is for you, eat and be filled. Otherwise, of course, I love you, and uh, I guess until later.